Welcome to this tutorial on the InLab Software 15. In this video, you will learn about functions in the Implantology module, demonstrated on a 3-unit screw retained bridge. First, create the restoration in the administration phase. To do this, first select Implant as well as Biogeneric Individual. Next, select the tooth number in which the implants are positioned, in this case, tooth 35 and 37. Select the pontic. Also select biogeneric here. The pontic is placed at tooth 36. Now enter the implant characteristics. In this case, we use multi unit abutments from Medentica. The respective abutments and adhesive caps are selected separately for each of the two implant positions. You can find the designations for the adhesive caps and abutments on the product package of the respective manufacturers. In the next step, which scan body to use for recording the implant position is displayed. Only then is the machine selected. The bridge is to be produced in the lab. Select InLab MCX5 for this. The material to be used is zirconium oxide. Confirm all entries by clicking OK. You can now switch to the scan phase. First, add the scan body lower jaw image catalog, in which first the model and then the implant positions will be recorded using the scan bodies. Begin recording with the overview scan. To do this, place the model without gingival masks with the front teeth facing the unit, pointing at the arm of the scanner, and start the scanning process. Check the jawline. If it is displayed completely, continue the scanning process by clicking OK. After all the images are scanned, you can check the model and, if necessary, double-click to add more images to close up any possible gaps in the scan. Confirm the overview image. Since the images of the overview scan are also required in the lower jaw catalog, copy the overview scans of the model here so that you do not have to repeat the scan. Next, the implant positions are scanned. To do this, the scanner moves to a loading position. Do not remove the model from the holder to insert it. Gloves must be worn to screw in the scan bodies. In this case, we begin with position 37. Now double click in the implant axis on position 37 to start the scanning process for capturing the implant position. The scan body is captured with a rotation scan and automatically included in the model. Now, take the scan body from position 37 and screw it on position 35. Important reminder, 
Scan bodies, including screwing or unscrewing them, may be handled only with gloves. The scanner moves into a special loading position for screwing or unscrewing. Please do not remove the model from the holder. Click on the implant axis once again, but this time on position 3-5, and record the second implant position. The second scan body is now completely captured. You may proceed with the other necessary scans. First, unscrew the scan body. Click on the gingival mask lower jaw to scan the gingival mask. To do this, please insert the previously removed gingival mask into the model once again. First, an overview scan should be performed in reduced mode. To do this, click on Jaw Scan and Scan Reduced. After the scan for the gingival mask has been made, you can check it and add scans by double-clicking if necessary. Once this is done, you can begin scanning the opposing jaw. To do this, also select Jaw Scan and Scan Reduced. When all the required scans have also been performed here, you can click on Continue once again to perform the buckle registration. To do this, the models are positioned under the scanner in the articulator. The scans may be done manually as well as in automatic mode. When all the scans have been completed, Click on the next arrow or the model button to go to the model phase. In the Edit Model step, you can check all the scans once again and edit them if there are areas that you would like to remove or revise. In the buckle registration step, you can check the occlusion once in the final bite position and once via the analysis tool. You can also check the contact point situation using contacts. In the set model axis step, the models are first positioned on the template as in classic restorations. First, the center line is defined, followed by the occlusion plane by checking both side windows. In the Edit Jawline step, drag the blue balls to the respective positions as you would do with classic restorations. If the implant positions, which are displayed as tooth numbers here, are not yet in their exact actual implant positions, you can drag them with the mouse and drop them into the proper position. When this has been done correctly, the implant positions are subsequently automatically detected.
In the Trim step, you can trim the model and remove excess areas if necessary. You can trim away areas that you want to show or hide for the design. In the next step, the implant position is calculated automatically. You can recognize this by the small purple ball on the scan body. If this ball lies significantly outside of the center, you should recalculate the implant position to the center of the scan bodies by double-clicking. The emergence line will then be aligned. In this case, this starts with tooth 37. The same thing can be done on tooth 35. If you wish, you can also hide the gingiva for this and not use it. We now come to the restoration axis step. The cylinder displayed in red shows that the deviation between the implant and restoration axis is more than 20 degrees. This deviation must be corrected at this point. You can first set the restoration axis for the entire bridge and adjust it individually once again afterwards by clicking on the teeth in the restoration selector. In the parameter dialog, you can individualize the parameters according to requirements. In the morphology step, different tooth shapes can be selected. In this case, we keep the biogeneric shape. Alternatively, you may also use a proposal from a dental database. In the next step, the restoration can be prepositioned or, in other words, adapted to the opposing jaw. You can also rotate it using the Position tool or adjust the height accordingly. The opposing jaw can also be made semi-transparent or completely hidden. You can switch to the Scale tool by toggling the spacebar to scale all the teeth together or individually. Clicking on the spacebar once again takes you back to the position mode of the tool. You can show or hide the opposing jaw at any time to check the work. Once all the positioning and scaling has been done, click on Edit Restoration to calculate the restoration. You now have the option of refining the restoration further using different tools, such as the Shape tool. Here you have the option of anatomical pre-selection of the areas. The color scheme for the approximal and occlusal points of contact can be shown to adjust it even without displaying the opposing jaw. In our case, the bridge is to be completely reduced in order to veneer it afterwards. To do this, click on Reduce. 
You can now activate all elements of the bridge with Control A and set the respective reduction level. The reduction is applied by clicking on the Apply button. At first, the reduced area is displayed transparently. If the reduction level is not sufficient, it can be increased. The new reduction level is set by clicking on Apply once again. When the tool is switched off, the reduction is applied to the restoration. The restoration can now be refined further with the tools. When all the work is completed, click on the next arrow to go to the production preview. You can check the result once more here and export the job to the InLab CAM software because production will be done in the InLab MCX5. Thank you very much for your attention. Good luck working with the InLab 15 software.